Uh, good evening, everyone. On behalf of Western India Regional Council, myself, Shweta Jain, Secretary WRC, welcome you all on the program of GST Notices and Assessment. Uh, we have with us uh, CA Murtaza Kachwala, Chairman WIRC, Speaker of today's session, CA Ashit Shah, and also our coordinator, CA Jayesh Lalwani. So before we start formally our today's session, I request everyone, please put your hand on your heart for the ICI motto. Kamam, 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, friends, this year, very thoughtfully, we have designed our theme as lead. And under the leadership of very dynamic and action-oriented chairman as CA Murtaza Kachwala, we all are ready to leap towards excellence, achievement, and development. And that is our theme for this year in shorter version, that is lead. And it is a combination of five goals which uh, we have set out for ourselves. The first goal is uh, technical upgradation of small medium practitioners with newer area of practice. And the second is bringing efficiency and effectiveness in work of chartered accountant. Third, we will try to become a bridge between the various section of the membership. Fourth, how we can make CA course more attractive for new chartered account, new upcoming chartered accountants. So fifth goal is we want to work on improving the image of overall chartered accountant, which is the need of the R. So today's program, I can say, is the need of the R again. And in recent times, we are hearing about notices and assessment from the GST department. And our members are facing so many challenges. So keeping this in our mind, we have designed today's program so that members uh, can take benefit of our experts. So moving further, I request our chairman, WRC, CA Murtaza Kachwala, sir, for his address to the participants. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Shweta. Uh, before, uh, let me first thank C. Ashit sir. Ashit bhai, really grateful. And uh, thank you very much for accepting our invitation at WIRC and uh, the sparing your valuable time today to share your knowledge with participants. Really, thank you. Let me also thank uh, the chairman of the Indirect Tax and GST Committee, Yashwant Kasar and Vice Chairman Gautam Vlad for organizing such a uh, nicely timed program on a very good and need of uh, Let me update you about three uh, upcoming uh, programs at WIRC. One, uh, we are planning a national conference on internal audit and that is on 13th and 14th of May at uh, ICAI Bhavan BKC Mumbai. And uh, I would request everyone to take part in this internoid conference. And it is a two day program, 13th and 14th, 12 hours CP. Oh. So coming every... Uh, we are losing you. Uh, 
can you hear our third and fourth of june Uh, I think some network Hello? issue. Am I audible? Yeah, audible. yeah now now we can hear you because in between uh, we are losing you. Okay, so uh, sorry. Uh, like uh, I was saying, the regional conference, which is the biggest program of WRC, is this year being is planned at Pune, and on third and fourth of June. And I would again request all the participants to join in large number for the regional conference. The topics are really. Again, thought out, quite thought out well, and uh, uh, preparing the chapter contents for to face the future. So, with that, I think uh, coming to today's topic, notices are coming, and uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, disputes, confusion. And Ashit Bhai is an expert, and I'm sure he's going to throw light on various aspects on different type of notices and how do we handle them. So, with that, happy learning to everyone, and over to you again, Shweta. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Chairman Sir, for briefing about our activities, which are coming up in next uh, few months. So, uh, of course, now time is here uh, from uh, listen to uh, our expert and today's faculty, C. Ashit Shah. But before that, let me take the privilege to introduce him. So, he is, of course, a Chartered Accountant, FCA, DISA, and he's providing training to corporate on indirect taxes since many years earlier with service tax and vet and now in gst so he's also one of the contributor to referencer every year published by gstpm regularly contributing article in the in the monthly magazine published by chamber of tax consultant and all india federation of tax practitioners also in a gstpm he is visiting faculty at Regional Institute of CAG, Comptroller, uh, Comptroller and or Accounting General of India, located in Mumbai. So he was awarded Best Column Writer for the year 1617 in the monthly magazine published by GSTPM. Also awarded Best Convener of Law and Representative Committee for 1617 by GSTPM. His co-authored book on Technical Guide on Annual Returns and Audit Report under GST for WIRC. Also co-authored book on Sapka Vishwas Legacy Dispute Resolution Scheme 2019 published by WIRC. He was chairman of the Law and Representative of GSTPM on Service Tax and GST for the year of 21-22. So with this brief introduction, I request C. Ashit Chasar, please take charge for the session. Thank you. Respected Chairman Murtuza Kachwala Ji, Shweta Jain Secretary, Coordinator Jayesh Talwani, and my dear friends, a very good evening to all of you. Sir, it's always a privilege to be a part of WRC because ultimately when an uh, opportunity has been given, I always take it that first of all, I will learn, I will read the subject and then present my views. So in a way, I learn a lot while doing the, uh, while uh, the session is allotted to me. So it's always a privilege to be associated with uh, the WRC always, sir. Now coming to the subject proper, today I have been uh, given a task to give my views on the notices and assessments under the GST. Friends, the GST, which was introduced in the year 2017, now will become a five years old baby, 2017, and now we are in the year 2022. So five years now, it will be completed in the month of July. The baby, infant baby, which was there earlier, now will become a notorious baby, a naughty baby. And naturally, it will now show their uh, color every time and we have to enjoy the color and musty of this uh, baby, newborn baby. Earlier, we all try to find it out and uh, taking the challenges in filing of the returns, understanding the portal issue, how to file the return, how to file the uh, GSTR 1, 3D analysis, mismatch, everything. But now the time has come that notices are issued every time and then and assessment also takes place, especially 17, 18, and 18, 19. So now, so for that matter, we have to uh, understand what is this notices and what is this assessment. And I think uh, uh, organizer has very uh, efficiently uh, understand 
the implication of this today's topic and have organized this uh, uh, program. So let us first try to understand what we mean by uh, notice. The word notice has not been defined under the Act. So we have to take the dictionary meeting. What do you mean by the notice? And as per the Cambridge Dictionary, it says to see or become conscious of something, to bring someone of the attention of, or information or a warning given about something that is going to be happening in the near future. So what is notice under the GST? It is merely a communication by the author, GST authorities with the text here which is registered or maybe unregistered person. So it is merely a communication. Now what kind of communication? A notice will be issued depending upon the purpose or gravity of the default or action required from the text here. And that notice could be named as either show post notice or a scrutiny notice or a demand notice. All these words, I am sure you must all have been now familiar because a lot of many notices have been issued in the past uh, uh, two to three months and people are now able to understand better what is the DRC 01, what is DRC 07, what is the ASS MP10 and all that thing. All that thing we will come uh, in a <coughs> short period of time. Now, first of all, let us try to understand under which circumstances these notices are issued. That is very important to understand. First thing, if any names has been collected on scrutiny of the taxpayer's JST return, as you are aware that all the taxpayers have to either file monthly return or a quarterly return, and these returns have to be scrutinized by the uh, authorities. And by scrutinizing this return, if there is any mismatch or discrepancy has been found, then the notices can be issued. Number two, based on the information received from another government department or a third party, that is the income tax department or a customs department, if any information has been passed on to the GST department, then department can issue the notice. The, the members who are practicing in service tax might have had the experience that in the last two years, many notices have been uh, issued because there was a mismatch of data between the G, uh, income tax return file, between the uh, form uh, 26 AS and the uh, GST return. It may so has happened that under the 26 AS, they have uh, deducted the tax deducted at source under various sections like 194C, 194J, and based on that, many issues notices has been issued. While doing so, it may have so has happened that the notices has been issued to even doctors and lawyers also, because from form 26, it, it was not possible to understand whether a particular kind of activity is covered within the government of service tax or not. And because all these notices were issued based upon the artificial intelligence. So now very important role in the, the GST or any of the department is the information which they have with, at their end and based on the artificial intelligence, all the notices are nowadays issued, whether it is a GST or whether it is an income tax or whether it's a custom set. <coughs> Third instances of issuance of notice. A few other common ground, when a person is required to be registered under the GST, when otherwise required under uh, uh, the law and he is not registered, then he may uh, be issued the notice. When the per taxpayer has not filed any return or done or have done delay in filing of the GST return, the notice may be issued. A person is required to discharge the tax liability. So he has not discharged the tax liability or he have filed the return but not when the full payment of tax, that means that is a short payment of tax, then under that circumstances also notices can be issued. Then if he has claimed the excess input tax credit, now you know that uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, in this GST mechanism, once the uh, GSTR1 return, that is the outward return uh, or uh, uh, outward supply return has been filed, it will automatically pop up into the uh, receivers uh, uh, service recipients uh, portal and under the form GSTR 2B and they will be able to understand yes this person from whom they have procured the goods or services they have filed the return and based on that the input tax credit is available many times it may so happen that the amount of credit which has been claimed is more than what is appearing in 2B and that is known as a mismatch in the details between the per return formula under GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B or between GSTR 2B and 3B. So whenever such mismatch happens, a notices are issued. So these are the few instances of based upon which circumstances on which the GST authority issues the notices. Now let's see one by one 
under what kind of notices are issued. Now, while going through these different types of notices, I have selected nine or 10 instances of cases in which the notices are issued. In these notices, whenever an assessment took place, it will little bit override with each other because I have to also deal with the assessment uh, uh, matter and therefore it would be a little bit overlap. But I have tried to see to that that it may not be overlap, but it, but I mean, it cannot deny to complete uh, uh, non-overlapping uh, of the same. Now, first notice. Notice for seeking additional information, clarification, documents relating to application for registration, amendment or cancellation. Now, whenever a uh, person wanted to register before the GS, uh, before the uh, GSK authorities, or either he has to make the amendment or cancellation, he will file an application. On, and then this that application would be scrutinized by the proper officer. If while scrutinizing, if the proper officer we find, that there are certain deficiencies in the notice, then he may issue a notice would be served under not, uh, form GST REG 03 within a period of seven working days from the date of submission of the application. So this is the first notice in respect of registration. Now, this form GST REG 03, why such kind of name is there? Normally, if you see under the VAT laws, the form number is based on the numerical forms, form number one, two, three, four, five, in income tax also it is like that but the uniqueness of the gst law under the gst law whole all the forms are bifurcated on the basis of, of the activity for which this form needs to be used so if you will find it out that whenever form reg is there then that form is used for the registration for person whenever he sees that reg is there that that form is in respect of registration so you will find that REG3, that means GST registration form number three. Form number one is application, form number two is for the uh, acknowledgement, and form number three is for the uh, any uh, deficiency in the search. So this is how you should uh, try to understand the, all the forms. Otherwise, it would be become too difficult to remember all the form numbers. Now, once the deficiency notice has been served upon the uh, applicant, then he has to rectify such uh, uh, mistakes or deficiency in form number GST REG04 within the next seven working days from the date of receipt of such notices. Then proper officer will again verify whether if it is satisfied with the clarification or information or documents which may, may have been submitted by the applicant for the registration purpose or for any amendment or for cancellation then he will accept that and issue either registration or cancel the registration or he will do the amendment. But if the reply is not submitted or a proper officer is not satisfied with the clarification or information or document furnished by the applicant, then such application may be rejected in form number GST REG05. So that rejection order will be issued uh, to that applicant. So this is as regards the first notice, notice under section REG. 03 and its compliances. Then next, notice for why the registration certificate should not be cancelled. Right? Now, you, know, you must be aware that registration certificate can be cancelled either by the applicant himself or by his legal uh, uh, representative in case of a death of such person or the registration certificate may be cancelled by the proper officer. So now let us first see what are the circumstances in which the application will be filed by the applicant or, or by his legal head. First situation, when the business has been discontinued or a transferred or amalgamated or demerged. Under this situation, the person applicant may file an application for registration because now there is no more a business is to be continued or the business whole business has been transferred uh, through amalgamation or demerger. Number two, when there is a change in constitution of business. So that means if the partner, if there is a proprietorship from, it has become a partnership from, or a partnership from, is there it becomes uh, converted into LLP or a private limited company, then the, there is a need for the uh, cancellation of registration. Then taxable person is no longer liable to the registration. So under these circumstances, the application will be filed by the, by the, by the applicant for the cancellation of registration. On the other contrary, the registration certificate may also be cancelled by the proper officer when under what circumstances he will cancel. So, so let us see. Number one, when a registered person contravenes any of the provisions of the law as may be prescribed. Huh? 
under it the law they have decided that if you contract any law then it may so happen that your registration may be cancelled then second <coughs> when a composition tax payer who is required to furnish the return for a three consecutive tax period he has not filed the return so three consecutive return means you know that composition tax payer is required to file returns quarterly so three quarter that if they have not furnished the return then in that case his registration certificate may be cancelled that means he may be issued a notice that to of show cause why his registration certificate should not be cancelled then number 3 registration certificate uh, sorry registered person not furnished return for a continuous period of 6 months now all the uh, uh, tax taxable person other than composite taxable person have to uh, file furnish the return either monthly or quarterly so if it is not filed for a continuous period of 6 months then his number is cancelled then tax payer obtain voluntary registration and has not commenced the business within 6 months period of time this is very important to understand many a times people are obtaining the registration certificate but for the 6 months they will not carry out any uh, business that means his turnover is going zero every time every 6 months though he is filing the return but if he has not started the uh, commence his business activity then the uh, officer or may issue him a notice or show cause why his registration certificate should not be uh, cancelled now let's see in which form notice will be issued so the proper officer will issue the notice in form reg 17 within a period of 7 working days from the date of receipt of application for for the uh, cancellation of registration requiring to show cause what the certificate should not be cancelled then reply to the notice have to be submitted in form reg 18 within a time period of specified in the notice so generally 15 days to 30 days time period is given to give the uh, uh, reply just a second so generally a proper officer will give a period of normally 15 days to 30 days time period to reply to the any uh, notices that are issued by the officer then what is to be done the registration certificate will be cancelled by issuance of order in form rgst reg 19 within a period of 30 days from the date uh, date of the application submitted by the applicant so 30 days mein that application uh, would be uh, order would be issued by the uh, uh, proper officer registration certificate will not be cancelled and proceeding should be dropped if proper officer is satisfied and he has passed the order in form gst reg 20 that means if the uh, register uh, he has applied for the registration but such registration certificate will not be cancelled and proceedings will be dropped if proper officer is satisfied and he is a uh, then in that case he will pass the order in form reg 20 but then you have to satisfy with all the documents and circumstances that why my registration should not be cancelled so this is as regards the uh, cancellation of registration certificate now third notice revocation of cancellation of registration now once the certificate of registration is cancelled now does the so the question is whether is it possible to again the tax payer can go for the revocation of registration certificate the obvious reply is yes he can definitely file an application for revocation of uh, uh, certificate of registration let us see how it will look so a registered person whose registration is cancelled by a proper officer on his own motion may submit an application for revocation of cancellation of registration so he can make an application for uh, revocation of the cancellation of registration the proper officer the proper officer will do he will issue a notice in form number reg 23 required the application applicant to show cause as to why the application submitted for revocation should not be rejected so he will give an opportunity before taking and any steps that uh, to show him a reason that why it should not why the certificate of cancel uh, registration should be revoked the applicant have to furnish the reply within 7 working days from the date of service of the notice in form number reg 24 so the applicant have to give the satisfactory reply evidence information documentation on the basis of which the officer will decide whether he should revoke the cancellation certificate or he should not so on receipt of the information or clarification the proper officer will dispose of the application of revocation 
uh, within a period of 30 days from the date of receipt of such information. So please deem the time limit pay. He has to be dispose of this application for revocation. Then the order of revocation of cancellation is to be passed in form GST REG 22 and rejection order will be passed in form REG 5. So that means if their uh, proper officer is not satisfied that uh, yes, he has done a correctly uh, cancel his certificate of registration, then he has to pass the order in form number REG 5 uh, and issue it to the uh, applicant. Now, someone has asked me whether will all the notices appears in the GST portal. So my request would be, I will come to that lecture, that manner in which the notices has to be issued at that point of time, I will definitely deal with that, how the notices uh, we, uh, uh, we, uh, have to be issued. Uh, uh, what I will do that all the uh, question answers, uh, I will take uh, at a, uh, up, uh, once I will finish, and I will definitely reply to, uh, try to reply to all the queries. Otherwise, there would be a, uh, no, uh, I will lose the track, right? But I, I will see to it that all the queries would be answered after the end of the session. Then next, huh? so everyone is requested, whatever are their queries, they can put on the chat box or q uh, box. Then notice to non-filers of return, rule 68. Now you know that uh, every tax tax taxpayer is required who is registered under the law they have to file the periodical returns so in respect of the uh, person who is registered uh, under a normal uh, law that means without composition taxable purpose depending upon his turnover criteria they have to file their return either monthly or on the quarterly basis and all the composite taxable person have to file their return on a quarterly basis so now what says that if that taxpayer is not filed the return, then what will happen? So the taxpayer who have not furnished the return in pursuance of section 39, that means if they have not filed the form GST at 3B, or section 44, that means GST at 9, section 45, that is GST at 10, GST at 10 is the fast last return. That means if a person has cancelled his registration certificate, then he has to file a final return or a last return, which is known as a GST at 10, or under section 52, that is a return to be pursued by, uh, filed by the uh, person who is required to uh, uh, collect the tax at source. Then they have to file the return. If they have not done file the return, then what is to be done? Then the proper officer will issue him a notice in which form GSTR 3A. I'm sure many of your clients must have received this such kind of notice in GSTR 3A if the client has not filed the return. Then what is the duty of the taxpayer? Compliance to the notice have to be made by filing the return along with late filing fees and interest, if any, within a period of 15 days from the date of receipt of the notice. So, what does the taxpayer needs to pay? Within 15 days, he has to file the return. Now, you know that mere filing of return is not possible under GST. If there is any tax liability, that tax liability has to be discharged. Otherwise, your return will not go. Now, what, what is the... <clears throat> Irony of the uh, law here. The GST law provides that you can file the return if also when if you don't pay the tax, right? That means um, also bolte hai ki the payable return can also be uploaded. However, under the GST portal, the portal doesn't allow it. Huh? What what portal says? It says unless and until you have made the payment, the return will not upload it. If any interest liability is reflected on the portal. Unless and until you pay the interest, your return will not be submitted. So this is the irony of the law. So many a times I say that if you are wanted to file your return, you should know the GST portal law. If you wanted to file the case, then you should know the GST law. So there are two parallel laws which are going at a time under the GST. One is a portal law and another is a GST law, which one has to understand and follow. And many a time both are going on a different direction. But being a consultant, we should know all the law, right? Then he has to, that means the taxpayer needs to file the return along with taxes and interest, if any, that has to be paid within 15 days from the date of the receipt of the return. But suppose if the person doesn't do that, doesn't file the return within 15 days of period of, then what will happen? Failure to file the return will invite the base judgment assessment and penalty pursuant to section 122. If you don't file the return, then the what officer will do based on the documents and evidence which, is, which are there with them, he will 
do the best judgment assessment that is ex parte assessment and issue the order and the penalty also needs to be payable under section 122 so this is as regards the notice issued in form number gstr 3a for the non filer of returns then notice to composition dealer बराबर है अभी हमने देखा नॉर्मल टेरेटेक्स डीलर को नोटिस दे दी इफ ही डजंट फाइल द रिटर्न नाउ सिमिलरली कंपोजिशन डीलर आल्सो नीड्स टू फाइल द रिटर्न सो व्हाट इज द थिंग नाउ टैक्स पेयर हु आर अंडर कंपोजिशन स्कीम शैल रिमेन वैलिड सो लॉन्ग एज ही सेटिस्फाई ऑल द कंडीशंस प्रोवाइडेड अंडर सेक्शन 10 राइट दैट मींस हिज टर्नओवर शुड बी विद इन दैट 1.5 करोड़ रुपीस ही शुड बी अ मैन्युफैक्चरर और अ ट्रेडर or other than uh, restaurant service provider he should not be a manufacturer of tobacco uh, right all these conditions are there then and then only he would be under a composition scheme once any of the conditions has been violated or breached then he would be immediately from the next one he would be out of the composition scheme so when a proper officer has a reason to believe that a registered person is not eligible to pay tax under composition tax that means his turnover is has exceeded 1.5 crore rupees or has contravened any of the provisions of section 10 then what will happen he may issue a notice under section cmt 5 to show cause to show causes within 15 days of the receipt of notice as to why the, the option to pay tax and the composition scheme shall not be denied now here you say new scheme a new form gst cmt 05 cmt stand for the composition the composition ke liye uh, the 05 number had so one has to now give the reply to the notice which has been issued under the form cmp 05 so now what the taxpayer has to do taxpayer has to provide a justification on cmp 06 and the proper officer will issue an order in form number cmp 07 within a period of 30 days of the receipt of such a reply either accepting the reply or denying the option to pay the tax under the composition scheme so within 30 days, he has to decide whether that person is eligible to be under the composition scheme or he should be out of the composition scheme. And once the order is issued, the only option which remains so with the officer, with the taxpayer, is to move file an appeal petition or otherwise he has to accept when the order has been passed. Then next thing is the scrutiny of the return, sixth notice. Now you know that. As I have told you earlier, that every return which has been filed by the taxpayer has to be scrutinized by the GST officer. So when so when any return is furnished by the taxpayer is selected for scrutiny, then proper officer will scrutinize the return and determine whether the same is made in accordance with the provisions of section 61. That means each one of the sare jo tax payment ki hai, that is made in accordance with the law. If during the scrutiny of the returns, if any discrepancy is noticed, then what the proper officer will do? He will issue the notice to the state taxpayer inform GST as and 10 informing to informing the taxpayer about the discrepancy and seeking his explanation within 30 days from the date of service of notice in form number GST as and 10. I am sure lot many uh, 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 many members. You must have received this notice ASMP 10 because nowadays the scrutiny of the return is going on. And most common notice which has been issued nowadays under ASMP 10 is the mismatch. It says there is a mismatch in the data, whatever data, whatever data in when put tax credit claim in the return that is GSTR 3B is more than what is shown in GSTR 2B, or it is not reconciled with the, your GST 9 annual return which has been filed by. You and there is a mismatch. So the taxpayer now needs to give the explanation that whether the allegation or information put forward by the officer during the scrutiny of the notice is correct or not. So the taxpayer has the option either to accept the discrepancy mentioned in the notice and pay the tax, interest, or any other amount and inform the same or furnish an explanation for the discrepancy for ASMP 11. So form ASMP 11 is the reply which has to be given by the in the form and in the form by the taxpayer. Either he will accept the discrepancy or he will give the proper justification or furnish an explanation that why there is a discrepancy. 
Also, this form needs to be uploaded on the portal uh, in the form GST ASMP level. If the explanation or information furnished by the taxpayer is acceptable, same will be implemented in form number ASMP 12. So, this information will be implemented to them in ASMP 12. Friends, here, one of the very important aspects which you will be appreciating that once the form has been issued, it will be uh, available on the portal ASMP 10. After the completion of the required days, that form will be gone from the system and then only option available is to give the reply. So then ASMP 11 will be there. So one has to be very much careful. Every time, every alternate days, one has to find, uh, we have to instruct the client that you please visit to the portal, see that whether any notices has been issued to you or not. Otherwise, it would be very much difficult because many times whenever an email has been sent, it may not be uh, reached to the client and therefore there will be a chances that the time limit which has been provided by the uh, proper officer may have been uh, left. Then next, best judgment assessment. Where a taxable person fails to obtain the registration, even though he is liable to do so, or whose registration has been cancelled, but who was liable to pay tax, then under these two circumstances, the proper officer may proceed to assess the tax liability on the basis of based of his judgment. That means how he will do? He will assess the tax liability based on the information and documents which is available with the, uh, him and he will determine the tax liability on the basis of his judgment. Now, you know that uh, a uh, uh, law of natural justice provides that before passing the order, a proper notice or communication has to be made to the taxable person. So, what proper officer will do? He will issue the notice in form GST ASMP 14. Huh? ASMP stands for assessment. So, a notice will be issued in form ASMP 14 containing the grounds on which the assessment is proposed to be made on base judgment basis and allowing him a time of 15 days to furnish the reply. So, 15 days ka time limit diya jayega to give him a reply whether what is the reason for the, uh, that, uh, for the uh, cancellation of this uh, not taking the registration or if you, his registration is cancelled but he is not liable to pay the tax. So, the taxpayer will also be served with a summary thereof in form number DRC01. Now, this is a new concept which is there. It was not there under the erstwhile service tax law or under the excise law. So, whenever here a notice of intimation is given, one a summary or, or, or thereof is also given so that it would be easier to the taxpayer to understand what is the my tax liability. So, a notice, a summary of uh, order will be given in form number GST DRC 01. Then proper officer will be made based on the information which has been submitted by the taxpayer. Proper officer will pass the order in form GST ASMP 15 and summary thereof shall be uploaded electronically in form number GST DRC 07. So ASMP 15 may he will pass the order and also the provides the summary which is to be uploaded electronically in form number DRC 07. Now what this form DRC stands for? Demand and recovery. That is the short form of DRC. So this summary would be uh, there uh, available on the portal. So this is as regards the notice issued in form number GST SMP 14 for the best judgment assessment. Then notice for conducting the audit. Under the GST law, the law has envisaged that there would be a uh, three kinds of audit would be there. First audit would be the audit which would be at the instance of the department. Second one, the department would be a special depart, audit will be done uh, uh, by the uh, under a special audit, which is to be carried out by, uh, by a, per, a person nominated by the government. And third one is the audit to be carried out before or 35 and the uh, turnover or by and that has to be done by either by a chartered accountant or a post accountant. Uh, to carry out the audit and the audit report has to be furnished in form number GST or 9C. So, where an audit is to be initiate, uh, initiated at the instance of the department, which may be for a financial year or part thereof or a multiple thereof, the proper officer shall issue the notice in form number GST ADT01. 
Now ADT stands for the audit. So 01 or ADT 01, my notice will be served uh, on the desk here on the, uh, the departmental audit has to be initiated. This departmental audit have to be completed within a period of three months from the commencement of the audit. So time limit This is also a very uh, welcome uh, uh, provision which is there under the GST law because earlier always a time limit for issuance of notice uh, was given, but uh, no time limit was provided for the completion of the uh, uh, order or the conclusion of the notice. So here they have said that once the notice is issued, then the audit needs to be completed within three months from the commencement of the audit. Then the proper officer will intimate the registered person of the discrepancy noticed if any observed in the audit. So the audit will be will taken place and during the proceedings of the audit, if any discrepancy is find it, uh, find, found out by the departmental auditor, then they will communicate to him and then they have to conclude the audit. So on conclusion of the audit, the proper officer shall inform the findings of the audit in form number EDT 02 and he will initiate an action under section 73 or 73 rule 142. That means the audit team will give only the report that this is the findings in the audit report. They will can't issue the notice under, uh, under section 73 or 74. Next notice under section 73 is to be issued for the demand and recovery of tax when there is a no fraud uh, or suppression is uh, involved uh, by, by the taxpayer and section 74 is there for, for the demand and recovery when there exists a, a, a fraud or a suppression of the facts by the taxpayer uh, by the taxpayer so the notice will be notice again the show cause notice will be uh, would be uh, issued under section 73 or 74 based upon the uh, facts of the matter now, notice for recovery of tax. What we have just talked about section 73 and section 74. Now, notice for recovery of tax. So, in which form the notice will be issued? Show cause notice under section 73 or 74. The law says that uh, tax uh, proper officer, in order to collect any tax, interest, or penalty under section 73 or 74, a statement or summary have to be issued in form number GST DRC02 of the sum payable and intimate the taxpayer in form GSP DRC01. So DRC01 may they have to intimate the taxpayer that yes, this is the sum a statement or summary of tax which has to be payable uh, by you and that would be uploaded on the GSP and portion. Then what is the option which is available to the taxpayer? Taxable person shall have an option either to make the payment of tax, interest and penalty before the service of notice or statement. That means before issuance of notice under section uh, in form DRC 02 or DRC 01, they can also make the sum of payment on his assessment or is communicated by the proper officer. And such payment of tax, interest and penalty have to be made in form number DSP DRC 03 and then they have to intimate the proper officer and proper officer will acknowledge the payment of such tax in DRC 04. However, if the uh, taxable person is making the payment of tax after the service of notice or statement of tax, then once the proceedings are concluded, the officer will issue an order in form number DRC 05. So DRC 05 may get order issued. So this is for the notice for recovery of tax under rule 142.2. Then next one is notice for sale of goods. There is a defaulter where any amount is due from a defaulter and that has to be recoverable by selling the goods belonging to him. Then the proper officer first shall prepare an inventory and an estimate, the market value of such goods and proceed to sell only such amount of goods which may be required for recovering the amount payable along with the administrative expenses incurred for recovery of the process. That means if <coughs> the taxable person is not in a position to discharge the tax liability, then the only option available with the proper officer is to sell the goods uh, from uh, which are there uh, uh, with them and then they will recover the tax amount as well as any administrative expenses incurred by them. 
since such but before doing carrying out such auction or re uh, or uh, e auction the notice for of, uh, of auction has to be issued upon such person whose goods are to be sold in form number gst drc 10 which clearly indicate that the goods to be sold and the purpose of sale so this needs to be dis uh, disclosed uh, in form number drc 02 and then and then in such manner they will do the recovery from uh, proceedings from the defaulting person now the important question so these are the few uh, circumstances in which the notices were issued also there are certain other uh, sections under which notice can be issued but this these are not of much relevant therefore i have not uh, i have selected only this nine types of notices which are important from the, uh, our day to day perspective then notice or other uh, how this notice or other communication under the gst law can be communicated to the tax payers or is representative someone uh, in the chat box someone has written that how this notices has to be served so this notices under the gst law or other communication has to be served either by a hand delivery either through directly or through a messenger or by a courier so either hand delivery bhi ye jayegi or through courier such notices will be delivered then number 2 registered post or a speed post or a courier with an acknowledgement due to the last known place of business of the tax payer that means first of all the notice will be sent to only to the place of business and not to the place of residence of that person so whatever uh, addresses which is mentioned at the time of the certificate of, of obtaining the certificate of registration or amendment to the registration certificate that address on that address the notice will be served uh, to the tax payer then third instance email address provided at the time of registration or is amended from time to time it will also be uh, notice will also be issued through email then making it available on the common portal that is gsti portal now one very important thing which one has to keep it in mind that normally we being a tax practitioner or a consultant for the client we normally say that yes sir, while uh, taking the registration uh the email and the communication address has to be provided is of the chartered accountant or a tax consultant why because then it would be easier for us to to take the track track of the same but friends believe me this would create a lot of difficulty because then every day morning you have to say wake up and see the portal for which client how many notices has been issued so it would not be feasible or practical to have the the email id and the communication address of a chartered accountant or a tax consultant uh, or consultant it is always advisable that to give the email id of the client and we should uh, update uh, or make aware of the client that one has to access to the email and portal regularly so that if any notices has been issued the, then they have to see to that and then forward the same to the consultant for taking the uh, action for the same then which is the next uh, way of communication of notice publication in the newspaper circulating in the locality in which taxable person resides so agar ye sare place pro possibility nahi hai then in that place the notices can be uh, published in the local newspaper in which the taxable person resides then which is the other mode if none of the mode aforesaid is practicable then the notice will be affixed in some of the conspicuous place at his known place of business or residence that means at last if the notice is not able to be served then it would be affixed in some places which is last known place of business or residence so business may be plural of it laga sakte hai aur ya to residence mein bhi laga sakte hai notice or by affixing it on the notice code of the office of the concern officer or the authority who has issued such notice this is the last resort suppose ye sari possibility failed ho gayi the department cannot able to locate the person to whom they wanted to issue the notice and last option which is available to them is to paste the notice in the notice board of the concern assessing officer or the authority who has issued such notice and that would be the serving of the notice in a proper manner and the <clears throat> uh based on such uh, serving of the notice the proper officer will take the action within a reasonable period of time which is provided in the notice so since these are the manner in which the notices has to be issued so this all are the 
notices what is notice under gst what are the what, what we have seen what, what is notice how notice under under which circumstances notices are to be saved what are the kinds of notices which are received uh, with, uh, with are sent by the tax department and how these notices are served now we will go to the our next agenda ah, before that notice before i go to the assessment how these notices uh, are issued now this gst notices system now in the whole gst system if you will say it is a <clears throat> low by uh, uh, low by computerization or electronic mode so all the gst system has been designated by taking into cognizance the digitalization that is reduction in physical paper and reducing the personal interaction with the person who is there at the helm of the affair so that all the replies to the gst notice can be submitted online on the gst portal so one need not have to visit to the uh, tax offices and give the reply so this has one more advantage now suppose if i am sitting in the bombay and my client is having a registration on a pan india basis then in that respect he will be required to uh, require 34 registration all over the uh, 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 in india now the question is whether by sitting in bombay if any notices has been issued in the state of haryana can obtain being a consultant in mumbai can i give the reply of this reply is yes i need not have to travel to the haryana and defend the deposit and the deposit the reply but just by simply uh, simply sitting in my office i can give the reply Uh, to the notices which has been issued this is because of the thanks to the digitalization of the old gst i portal the tax payer can use the digital signature or e signature to file such a reply to the notices in case when the tax payer receiving the gst notices does not reply within the stipulated time period then he shall be liable for penalties which may include prosecution and further proceeding as per the provision of the law so one very important thing one has to keep it in mind that whenever any notices are issued please don't ignore it at least give them a reply if you are not ready with the reply then at least you file a reply that we are in the process of compilation of the data please uh, give us some more time and take the adjournment of the matter otherwise it will be considered as a non compliance and you may be penalized for such non compliance and that penalty is per notice or a per default period so one has to be very much careful and therefore it is saying it is that it says so that it is always advisable to be on the right side of the law so that one is not left out one very important thing if you have done the right thing right side of the law then you are not left out that means you will not be penalized so this is what as regard the notice and now we will come to the another very important aspect after notice is the assessment so we will now see what are the assessment so i think before going to the assessment i think i will check the chat box and try to reply the queries relating to the uh, notices so first is the mr uh, just a second ha huh? yeah first is uh, mr vishwanathan uh, from uh, it says will all the notices appear in the gst portal yes all notices normally is appearing in uh, gst portal so one has to give the reply digitally uh, through by submitting the reply uh, on the uh, portal there is no need to visit to the uh, gst office then the next query of atul mishra once gst assessment order is passed by the proper officer further it can be rectified by the proper officer sir for assessment i will come little bit uh, later first of all i will take about the notices uh, then mr subham sandesha can asmp 10 notices can be issued several times for same financial year by the proper officer yes the notes the gstr uh, asmp 10 notice can be issued for the discrepancy so for different discrepancies different asmp 10 notice can be issued for the same financial year there is no bar but the same notices for the same matter cannot be uh, issued then third one show cause notices are issued to qr mp tax payer for not filing the monthly gstr 3b returns and consequently assessment orders with penalties are also issued through emails no such notices and assessment order does not appear in tax payer gst portal how to to deal with such situation 
sir i think uh, for you uh, if the notices are not uh, uh, issued to you then that is a uh, violation of the natural justice and you can always uh, write it to the higher authorities and if the order is passed then only the recourse available to you is to either rectify the order or you have to file an appeal petition before the uh, high court uh, the appeal petition before the commissioner of appeal uh, commissioner of appeals that that is the only solution please delete the term no in the sentence no sir in this sentence okay then sandeep boy during the departmental audit if it is found by the officer that the ssc has paid excess gst tax then can the auditor audit officer will issue the refund order no the gst or officer will not issue the refund order he will only assess the tax uh, thing what and whatever excess tax payment has, has been made that a refund application has to be filed by the uh, tax payer and it won't be refunded uh, automatically then akshay on what basis notice is served sometimes online email and sometimes uh, offline through courier yes i have mentioned you under the circumstances under which the notices can be uh, communicated to the tax payer sir how to respond to the notices received anand shenoy sir how to respond to the notices received for mismatch in gspr 2a and itc claim in gspr 9 for the year 1718 because there was no gspr 2a at that uh, point of time sir this is the most uh, common problem which is faced by everyone because uh, during the period 1718 there was no gspr 2a and therefore it becomes very much difficult to tally it with the itc claim but the option which is available is that at present now we can find out the gst uh, tr 2a for the financial year 1718 and on the basis of that one has to uh, claim the itc one cardinal principle is that that if the government has not received the uh, taxes which has been paid by the <coughs> vendor then in that case to claim the credit it would be very much difficult so one has to follow the rule uh, uh, section 16 2 then in case of cancellation of registration this query is from mr akshay in case of cancellation of registration the cancellation order has not been passed since 5 months please advise what has to be done as i am unable to file final return gstr 10 on the portal please note that the proper officer had seek the clarification which was timely provided yet the cancellation order has not been passed even after 5 months kindly assist sir in this case you have to only uh, follow up with the officer if you are cannot file the, the final return gstr 10 then in that respect you must just write a letter that yes because of this you cannot do it but this is a procedural thing so you have to contact the gstr officer write them an email and uh, personal visit otherwise it will be difficult to uh, come to conclusion Yash Rathod, sir, what are the consequences if taxpayers fail to pay any penalty in response to the notice because of this involved insolvency? <laughs> so, if he has failed to pay any tax, interest, or penalty, then naturally the recovery proceedings will be initiated. That is the only thing. Though he may be insolvent, that the uh, recovery proceedings will be from the his legal head. so these are the uh, queries which were there in the chat box then in q and a still two more queries are there number 1 can gst notice for the same year 1718 be issued by dgci and then range of is range of is issued notice in drc 01 and finalize the order in drc 07 for the same year dgci is doing investigation so can dgci can issue so post notice yes very important uh, the uh, point which is raised by this person see here the point is that uh, whether dgci can issue the same notice or not here the uh, first of all the notice has been issued by the range office based on the scrutinization of the return dgci normally issues uh, the notice based on the some information of the tip which has been received by them particularly in respect of any transaction so normally 
they have all the right to issue the notice for the same so in that case they one has to reply to them and at the same time they have to also mention the fact while replying to the dgci notice that yes the same the transaction has been taken care of by by the range office if it has been taken care of but suppose if the same transaction has not been taken care by the range office then the dgci has all the right to examine such transaction afresh and one has to comply to the notice which has been issued by the dgci in case of a cancellation of registration the cancellation order has been has not been passed since 5 month please advise uh, ha this i have already uh, uh, advised so i have given the uh, uh, reply to the queries which has been issued put in the chat box as well as the qa day the session so now i will uh, go to the assessment how the assessment will take place let's see that so now let us try to understand what do we mean by the assessment so what is assessment assessment means determining the tax liability under this act and this also includes self assessment reassessment provisional assessment and uh, summary assessment and the best judgment assessment so these are the types of assessment which are uh, kind and type of provision which are been there under the gst law section 2 subsection d1 defines the uh, meaning assessment so now based on this definition of assessment now let us try to understand how the assessment will takes place so assessment can be take place for two kinds of person a registered person and an unregistered person so now first of all let us see how the assessment will take place in respect of registered person so a registered person when he files the return then when he files the return his returns would be scrutinized and that would be scrutinized under section 61 that means his assessment will take place <coughs> when that flexible person doesn't file the return then the assessment would be the best judgment assessment and that would be taken care under section 62 if the registered person unable to determine the value of supply of goods or services or both or he is unable to determine the rate of tax which is applicable on that value of on supply of goods or services and under this circumstances a provisional or a summary assessment would be taken place under section 60 and 64 all this assessment we will take uh, we will go into the depth uh, in the subsequent slide but sir first of all let's understand in globally what kind of assessment will take place when assessment of unregistered person since the unregistered person is there so naturally he will not submit the uh, returns and in the absence of the return the what the proper officer will do proper officer will do carry out the assessment on the basis of the documents and records and information which is available to him so that is a best judgment of this assessment and that will be carried out under section 63 so now let's see that what are the assessment the first one is the self assessment now you know that every registered person self self assess the tax payable under the this act and furnish a return for each tax period as specified under section 39 now what do we mean the tax period tax period means the period for which the return is required to be filed so that means every uh, uh, taxable person has to file the return section under uh, under section 39 so which returns that is gst or tb uh, every month based on his criteria or in every quarter file file the return and by filing the return it is self assessed that, that means all the information explanation and details which has been provided in the return are true and correct now what now let us see which are the person who have to require uh, to furnish the return under section 39 39 mein kaun se type ke uh, ssc ko return file karna zaruri hai first a person who is discharging the tax liability under section 9 to usko gst ya tb bharna hai person who is discharging the tax liability under section 10 to usko form number gst ya 4 bharna hai right then person who is required to deduct tax under section 51 that is tb as gst file form number gst ya 7 input service distributor gst file form number gst ya 6 and not resident taxable person under form gst ya 5 so all this category of person has to require to file the return periodically based on the nature of his turnover criteria 
and file the return for each tax period and that return should be a self assessed return now what law says that when any amount of self assessed tax in accordance with the return furnished under section 39 remains unpaid either wholly or partly or any amount of interest payable thereon and such tax remains and such interest remains unpaid then the same shall be recoverable pursuant to section 69 so section uh, sorry section 79 section 79 gives the recovery proceedings under which circumstances the law will initiate the recovery pro pro proceeding from that taxable person that means for each tax period whenever we are filing gst rtb if the tax is not paid or if the interest is not paid then that would then the officer will not wait that yes this is a self assessed so pehle main uska assessment karunga and then usko main recovery ke liye dunga no here the law says ki jo bhi aapne amount bataya hai while filing the return that is gst r 3b or uh, under uh, other forms that is gst r 4 7 6 or 5 ye sab mein jo bhi liability tax liability disclose ki hai agar that has remain unpaid partly or wholly or any interest there on then in that respect that would be considered to be a amount which has to be recoverable under section 79 the law goes further kya bolta hai from 1st january 2022 an explanation has been inserted in section 75 where which provides that if any tax liability is included in the details of outward supply That is GSPR one. Me, I have no outward tax liability included. Ki hai, but this transaction or this tax liability has not been included in the return which is furnished under Section 39. Then such liability would be considered as a self-assessed tax, and the recovery proceedings can be initiated pursuant to Section 79. Very dangerous provision. So what happens normally? हम क्या कहते हैं हम जिसको माल सेल करते हैं तो हमने जीएसटीआर वन तो हमें भरना ही है ठीक है क्योंकि उसमें मुझे कोई टैक्स लाइबिलिटी नहीं भरनी है तो मैंने टैक्स पूरा दस ट्रांजेक्शन है दसो ट्रांजेक्शन जीएसटीआर वन में अपलोड कर लिए सो देट द पर्सन टू हुम आई हैव सप्लाइड द गुड्स ही कैन एबल टू रिफ्लेक्ट इन इज जीएसटीआर टू बी एंड ही कैन टेक द क्रेडिट ऑफ द सेम बिकॉज बेस्ड ऑन टू बी कैन टेक द क्रेडिट बट आई हैव नॉट फाइल माई रिटर्न so in that respect there there is no my self assessed tax because i have not filed the 3b so mere paas koi recovery action nahi hogi so now from 1st january 22 an explanation has been inserted which says that if any transaction which is appearing in gstr1 that means this thing trend transaction that is my accepted liability if due to some reason that is not been uh, on which the, it is reflected in gstr3 that means maine uske upar tax nahi bhara hai then also the government can invoke the provisions of recovery of tax person to section 79 and recover the any uh, the uh, recovery proceedings since this uh, pro, uh, explanation has been inserted from january 22 and the provision says that ye 39 mein hum jo bhi aapne return bhara hai that is accepted liability there was lot of hue and cry among the your business people uh, circle why because there might be a chances that because of the genuine mistake sometimes the amount is reflected in outward supply but it is not there in gstr 3b and at the later month while finding out this error the taxpayer has uploaded the details of uh, in the gstr 1 in the subsequent month and the no, there is no uh, the, there is no <coughs> tax liability is outstanding but if we read the plain reading of say, this explanation it sir it appear that for that particular month there was a liability which is not reflected in 3b so in so the uh, <coughs> uh, recovery proceedings can be initiated so in 7th on 7th january 2022 a uh, cbic has issued a guidelines for recovery of tax Uh, under instruction number one, and I verified that under which in, uh, circumstances the department officer can invoke the provisions of section seventy nine and to initiate the recovery proceeding. So the uh, <coughs> instruction provides that in respect of a genuine error which has been rectified by the taxpayer in the later period, then under such circumstances no recovery action has to be initiated by the department. So this is a welcome. Uh, a clarification which has been issued by the cbic in this respect then scrutiny of the return 
Now, as you know, and I have discussed while issuing the uh, GST SMT 10, that uh, every return which has been uh, furnished by the taxpayers, it may be called for the scrutiny. That means the proper officer has power to scrutinize the return and related particulars furnished by the registered person to verify the correctness of the return. The proper officer court has power here to scrutinize the return which is uh, furnished by the taxpayer. So during the scrutiny, if any discrepancy is noted, then such discrepancies has to be intimated to the taxpayer in GSP ASMP 10, informing about such discrepancy. Then proper officer will provide him an opportunity to give the explanation within 30 days period of time from the date of service of notice. And this time limit may be issued at the request of the registered person. So I have told you that if you cannot able to provide the reply within a period which has been stipulated in the notice, then you have to give the uh, reply and ask the seek for the extension of the time period. And if it is uh, reasonable, then the proper officer can give the uh, extended period of time limit. Now, what, does, uh, what is the option available with the registered person? When his return is scrutinized, he have two options. Either he accept the discrepancy, whatever has been, has been implemented to the, by the tax officer. If he accepts that uh, discrepancy, then he has what the taxpayer needs to do. He has to pay tax, interest, plus any other amount which is arising from such discrepancy. But no penalty needs to be paid because on the intimation of the officer, this amount has been paid. The registered person has to intimate the proper officer in the form GST ASMP 11 about the payment or explanation. That means ASMP 11, may, if he has accepted the discrepancy, then he has to mention it in ASMP 11. If I, this is I have accepted, this payment I have made along with interest. But suppose he doesn't want it to accept the discrepancy, then he has to provide a reasonable explanation or a clarification in the form ASMP 11. If information submitted by the registered person is acceptable to the proper officer, he will inform the, to the registered person in, register in GST ASMP 12. So, if he has an explanation accept kar liya hai, then an again an information will be sent to the registered person that yes, I have accepted your uh, information or explanation in respect to the discrepancy. Now, what will happen when he submits the explanation to the discrepancy? If after submitting the uh, explanation, if no satisfactory explanation has been provided by the registered person, or after accepting the discrepancy, he fails to take the corrective measure in his return, then what will happen? Then the proper officer may initiate the action. What kind of action? Then the audit by the tax authorities under section 65, that means the special audit would be conducted, uh, sorry, audit would be conducted by the officers of the GST department, or special audit would be conducted at the initiation of the commissioner, or search and seizure may take place, or proceeds to determine the tax liability under section 73 and section 74. So, this may that liability will be uh, determined and communicated to the officer. So, now next uh, assessment would be assessment of the non-filers. Now, we have seen that notice is also issued for the non-filers. But you the assessment kaise hoga. When a registered person fails to file the return as prescribed under section 39 as well as final return under section 41. So, section 39 mein konsa return bola hai? GSTR 3B. Or 45 mein konsa return hai? Final return. If they fail to provide that final return or a <coughs> periodic return, then proper officer will serve them a notice of to such defaulters to file the return in form GSTR 3A. So, unko notice di jayegi in for GSTR 3A to please file the return uh, within the uh, within the time frame uh, uh, period uh, 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 communicated to them. The registered person still fail. Now, after in, uh, giving them an opportunity, still if that person doesn't file the return or comply the notice, then what is the option available to them? Proper officer proceeds to assess the tax liability to the best of his judgment based on the information available with him in GST ASMT 13. That means he will issue the notice in ASMT 13, that is the best judgment assessment to the person and at the same time, a summary will also be uploaded in the form DRC 07. 
तो मैंने एक बताया कि बहुत अच्छी बात है कि जस्ट बाई बाइम द इंटीमेशन दे समरी ऑर्डर इन दैट समरी दे This much is tax liability, CGST, SGST, IGST, interest, and these are the amount of penalty which a person needs to be payable. Then proper officer is to pass the order within a period of five years from the due date of furnishing of the annual return. Once the uh, notice for the default uh, uh, assessment for the defaulter has been issued, then The order has to be passed within a period of five years from the due date of furnishing the return. So, a due date paise ki nii jaati hai. Let us see this. If the return for the month of June 19 is not furnished, ah, uh, then best judgment assessment can be taken place within five years from the due date of filing of annual return for the financial year 2019-20. बराबर है तो 31 December 2021. Uh, was the last date and it has been extended to for one or two months. So that was the last date of filing of annual return. So till that period of time, a best judgment assessment can be passed and not a later than that. So this is as regards the assessment of the non-filers of the return. Then next is the first uh, assessment of the person who of unregistered person. अनरजिस्टर्ड पर्सन का असेसमेंट कैसे होगा वेर टेक्सेबल पर्सन फेल्स टू ऑप्टेन द रजिस्ट्रेशन इवन दो इज लाइबल टू डू सो और हुज रजिस्ट्रेशन सर्टिफिकेट हैज बीन कैंसिल्ड अंडर सेक्शन 292 बट हु वाज लाइबल टू पे टैक्स हां दैट मींस अ पर्सन फेल्स टू ऑप्टेन द रजिस्ट्रेशन इवन दो इज लाइबल दैट मींस द लायर टू टर्न ओवर इज मोर देन 20 लाख इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ सर्विस एंड मोर देन 40 लाख इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ गुड्स Or whose registration is cancelled, though he is liable to pay the tax, then under these two circumstances, an assessment can be made. Now, since the return is not filed, so that kind of person would be considered as unregistered person. So this unregistered person, a notice will be issued by the proper officer in form A S M P forty, and allowing them a time limit of fifteen days to furnish the reply. Now. This issue of notice in ASMP 14 cannot be done on the GSTI portal. Why not possible? Because this person is not registered with the uh, with, with the uh, GSTI department. Therefore, he is not there on the GSTI portal. So the notice cannot be issued. Then, in such a circumstances, notice can be issued in other way. That is by hand delivery or through a messenger or through by a courier or by a street post or in any other manner which has been described. Then proper officer may proceed to assess the tax liability of such taxable person to the best of his judgment for the relevant tax period in form GSTR 15 and summary thereof to be uploaded in DRC 07. So his tax liability will be assessed based on the suppose if he has not furnished still the details or an explanation, then the proper officer will carry out this best judgment assessment. And issue the uh, IMA not, uh, order under section A seventy fifty and summary in DRC zero five. Assessment order will have to be passed within a period of five years from the due date of furnishing of annual return of the same financial year. This we have already seen. And the opportunity of being heard would be given to such person before the passing of the best judgment order. So this is the cardinal principle that whenever a best judgment assessment is carried out, one has to provide an opportunity of being heard always. If such opportunity is not provided, then such order passed by the officer is held in his show invalid, and it will be struck down. Now, apart from <coughs> best judgment assessment, what else can be done uh, with the tax payer? The interest would be payable at the rate of eighteen percent, and penalty would be payable to the extent of fifty thousand rupees. That is, uh, so fifty thousand rupees under the central law. Fifty thousand rupees under the state law, so total one lakh rupees penalty needs to be payable if that person fails to obtain the registration when he is liable to do so, or if his registration of certificate has been cancelled, though he was liable to pay the tax. So this is how the assessment will take place. Then provisional assessment, as I have mentioned earlier, that under which circumstances the provisional assessment will. Taken place. If a taxable person is not able to determine the value of goods or services or both, or the rate of tax applicable on such goods or services or both, then in that circumstances, that taxable person has to 
put a request before the uh, proper officer uh, in writing in in and by electronically in form GST A seventy zero one, giving the reasons for payment of tax on provisional basis because he is not in a position to determine the value of goods or service which he is supplying or the rate of tax. So we say also provisional basis pay he will make discharge the tax liability. The payment of tax on provisional basis may be allowed. If the taxable person executes a bond with such a surety or a security as the proper officer may deem fit, binding the taxable person for payment of the difference between the amount of tax is may be finally assessed and the amount of tax provisionally assessed. So he has to provide a security to be furnished, and such security amount should not exceed 25 percent of the amount recovered under the covered under the bond. So 25 percent he is a security of the tax liability. Key. Security be the need for it. Then, after getting the information from the taxable person, proper officer will pass the order in form ASMT ten on the basis of ASMT one. The proper officer will determine that what would be the value of goods or services uh, which has been supplied by the person, or what would be the rate of tax, and he will pass the order in GST ASMT zero four within a period of ninety days from the date of receipt of such request in ASMT one. So 90 days may ye order pass kiya jayega. Then proper officer will have to pass the final assessment order. But our yaha usko pass karna hai ASMT 10 mein. Now the proper officer will pass the final assessment order in ASMT 07 within a period not exceeding six months from the date of communication of order, specifying the amount payable by the registered person or the amount refundable if any. So yaha jo humne ASMT 1 mein dekha that is the Order which has been passed in ASMT 10 based on the ASMT 10. So, he final order nahi hai within 90 days. But within for a six months period of time, he has to determine the tax liability, if any, and communicate to the uh, taxable person. And if any excess tax has been paid, that amount will be refunded. This period of six months may be extended by the joint commissioner or additional commissioner, uh, commissioner for a further period of six months and by the commissioner for a period not exceeding four years. So, one char is all the time on the assorty. Four years, your amount would be held up. Registered person is liable to pay interest at the rate of 18% on any tax payable on the supplies under the provisional assessment, but not paid on the due date from the first day after the date due date of payment of tax till the actual date of payment. So, if at the time of passing of the final uh, assessment order, if it appears that more amount needs to be payable, then he needs to uh, make the payment along with interest at the rate of 18%. In case where the tax paid is more than the tax payable, consequent upon the final assessment order, the taxable person would be entitled, entitled for the interest at the rate of 9%. Agar humne paisa jada bar diya hai, then in that respect, the taxable person will be eligible for the refund at the rate of 9%. So at the same time, the government is taking the interest. If it is excess, they will need the refund or uh, uh, interest on the refund amount also. Then summary assessment. Kabhi summary assessment hota hai. This is the last type of assessment. We say that if a proper officer on any evidence showing any tax liability of a person coming to his notice, with the previous plan, he will issue a person a notice to protect the as and assess the tax liability of such person to protect the interest of the revenue. That means if uh, during the course of uh, <coughs> investigation, if the proper officer has come across certain transaction which says that this is the tax liability, then and if he feels that if I will not recover this assess this uh, transaction then tomorrow this person may be go away and then in that case the interest of the revenue would be affected, affected and therefore to protect the interest of the revenue he will do the assessment only after taking a previous permission from the additional commissioner or joint commissioner and that is known as a summary assessment. Proper officer will issue an assessment order in ASMT 16 if he has a sufficient ground to believe that any delay in doing so may adversely affect the interest of the revenue and upload the summary of the order in DRC 07. So very important thing under the summary assessment is that the <coughs> assessing officer must have certain evidence with him and he has a reason to believe that if there is any delay, 
in doing so it will adversely affect the interest of the revenue the taxable person to whom the liability pertain is not ascertainable and such liability person per pertains to lab uh, supply of goods then the dead person in charge of such goods shall be deemed to be the taxable person liable to be assessed and liable to pay tax and any other amount due under this section so you will understand that when which are the circumstances under which the, such kind of transaction will come this will come when there is a, a movement of goods from one state to another right then only this summary assessment will takes place so for example a goods is going from maharashtra to the state of gujarat while it reaches to the state of gujarat a officer has intercepted the vehicle and he has verified all the documents while verifying the documents and the goods it has appeared that whatever is mentioned in the invoice goods that is not there in the conveyance or a carriage then accordingly there is a violation and then at that point of time the proper officer in the gujarat may feel that if this person is not registered in gujarat if i will serve, ask him uh, will give him a green signal to go away then he may not be able to catch him and therefore he will do the summary assessment and if the uh, at the time of interception of the goods if uh, the liability pertains to the supply of goods then what he will do then such person will be assessed and liable to be taxed and any other would be under this Uh, section so that he will hold the uh, carriage owner or the motor owner to that this person is in the possession of the goods and his uh, and he would an assessment would be carried out now lastly we will see what are the monetary limits of uh, doing the assessment so what it says the while issuing the notice who can issue the notice right so the notice can be issued by the superintendent of cgst or sgst if the total amount of involvement is up to rupees 20 lakh so this lakh that superintendent has been given a power to issue the notice the assistant commissioner or deputy commissioner the limit has been up from 20 lakh rupees up to 2 crore rupees assistant commissioner or deputy commissioner and to the additional and joint commissioner about 2 crore rupees without any limit they can issue the uh notice uh, uh, for the recovery of the tax this has been specified in the circular number 31st may 2018 which has been issued on 9th february 2018 so one has to be very care uh, careful while uh, receiving such notices we have to first of all see whether the person who has issued the notice has the authority to issue the notice and then and, and then and then only the reply to such notice has to be provided so this is the monetary limit and lastly i have concluded uh, the session uh, over here i am sure that uh, all of you must uh, uh, must have, uh, i have tried to explain you the provisions of the notice and assessment and uh, it has been saying uh, that uh, uh, sorry सर कुछ क्वेश्चन आंसर लेना है क्या हाँ ले लेते हैं जस्ट अ सेकंड सो आई विल गो टू द चैट बॉक्स या नाउ अक्षर मुंद्रा सेज ऑन व्हाट बेसिस नोटिस इज सर्व समाइम्स ऑनलाइन ईमेल एंड समटाइम्स ऑफलाइन कोरियर हाउ टू सबमिट अ क्लोजर लेटर इन फोर इन केस ऑफ ऑनलाइन नोटिस yeah so the notices will be served uh, sometimes online and sometimes offline courier how to submit the closure letter in case of online notices sir we need not have to uh, submit the closure letter closure letter will come from there and, and normally that closure letter will come in the any of the form asmp uh, forms and it would be on the online only i think all this yeah i have already taken Uh, answer does this provision of recovery is applicable for returns filed before january 22 ah now very interesting case anand says that uh, what we have seen that uh, uh, from first day of january 2022 if in a text here discloses certain transaction is his gspr1 return 
then in that respect it would be considered as a self assessed tax and the recovery proceedings will be initiated so his reply is that if any return is filed before january 22 then what would be the status in my mind or in my view the such provisions will not be applicable for any returns which has been filed prior to january 22 so all returns which has been filed after january 22 this would be applicable then akshay mundra sir would you please advise on some publication or journal which as an idt professional may refer to remain updated with gst law notification circular and case laws akshay one has to be updated because gst law is such that it is based on the notification and circulars and clarification and on the top of it uh, ars so one has to be updated updated every time our in, uh, wrc uh, or, uh, or or ici is always issuing uh, the journals uh, uh, monthly uh, uh, i think newsletter is there wherein all the updates are, are provided i think you can very well refer to that Uh, there won't be any uh, and many publications are uh, also coming so one has to refer to that but very important thing if anyone uh, uh, if uh, one has to practice in uh, the gst one has to be updated because the laws are changing very fast very fast uh, the notifications and circulars are circulars are coming so one has to be updated otherwise it may so happen that you might be giving to give the tend to give the wrong uh, advices and then ultimately the client has to be suffer now going to the other chats ah i think i have uh, tried to give the all the uh, queries which has been there on the chat box so if anything else uh, is there then i am uh, try to solve the queries so we have to uh, put it open for qu uh, asking question yeah 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 definitely If anybody wants to ask question, he can ask in next two to five three minutes. I think there are no questions uh, because all have understood all the things because you have explained in so detail. Chalo, let's hope so. <laughs> First, last thing I would like to uh, say. that uh, gst law is such that one has to be very much careful while doing the practice uh, i have come across that uh, we being a professional try to adhere to the timelines and because of that uh, we are tremendous we are during those uh, uh, filing days especially on the 11th and on the 20th we are under tremendous pressure so one has to be keep quiet calm go slow down and be positive in approach and one has to be always updated otherwise uh, we might uh, uh, go under a stress and that would not be good uh, uh, from the uh, from the health perspective we have come across uh, many professionals young professional uh, has been passed away one of very very good friend and our uh, idt per, uh, person uh, who has been passed uh, recently and therefore my only advice is to one has to be very much cool and calm and enjoy the practice rather than to take the pressure this is what i would uh, like to tell you yeah mr shena is having some question uh, question yeah. here put it in chat box okay. anand says sir there is a case law of madras high court regarding itc availment will that case law will be accepted by the gst uh, by the maharashtra state gst department see if there is a no contrary judgment of the bombay high court then definitely the jurisdictional high court uh, thing will be applicable unless and until the bombay high court comes up, comes with a contrary view so till any such uh, the decisions uh, pronounced by the bombay high court madras high court judgment will prevail there is a one uh, in maharashtra yeah. sgst yeah. department have come up with ledger confirmation uh, circular correct the cgst is not accepting that yeah so what is the remedy sir in that case uh, you have to pursue to the gst department but, but because uh, that ultimately the state and central is one but i know personally that yes there is there are difficulties central officers don't accept that but we have we are pursuing this matter before the uh, higher authorities and i am sure that within a couple of days the positive result will come out and they will also come out with the uh, solution for such thing 
because it is a, a need of the hour to uh, because in the initial days lot of uh, tax practitioners and uh, businessmen have made mistakes and therefore such kind of liberal interpretation is required i think one mr rajesh dalal he says if notice is issued on portal and time limit for reply is 7 days and no notice is served on mail when will 7 days count for sir so 7 days time limit will be counted from the notice which is uploaded on the portal then you should not accept that you should receive it on email that is very much clear because the law has provided the manner in which the notice is has to be issued so one cannot uh, be wait and therefore i have uh, said that all the tax payer need to go to the portal every day jaise hum bolte hai subah mein uthte hai bhagwan ka naam lete hai barabar hai uske baad hame portal kholna hai aur fir dekhna hai ki mujhe kuch love letter aaya hai ki nahi aaya hai then that is why one has to keep a track otherwise it would be very difficult rajesh bhai says if order is passed by state and we have to file appeal to the tribunal can we submit the same to center this person when the appeal is filed tribunal can be submit the same to the central in the state has not continued tribunal. sir central may be tribunal has not established so till the uh, what so what is the remedy now say for example is for question is that if the order has been passed by the commissioner of appeals right now what is the remedy available and he wanted to further go to litigate the uh, matter then in that case the appeal lies before the tribunal unfortunately the tribunal has not been formed and therefore what is the remedy then what we are doing that we are writing a letter and submitting the all the documents which has to be submitted before the tribunal before the uh, commissioner of appeals as well as to the state jurisdiction or central jurisdiction and intimating them that because there are no high uh, tribunals has been formed therefore this appeal petition has been submitted before you and till that point of time you should not uh, uh, do the recovery proceedings and we have, we have to also pay the uh requisite pre deposit uh, at that point of time can we get today's study material yeah this is my powerpoint presentation now yes. yeah yeah definitely i will share it okay absolutely no problem i think all of the queries have been solved by you so should we proceed to closing remarks yeah definitely i first of all thank you wrc chairman and wrc secretary for giving me this opportunity to propose vote of thanks for today's beautiful session ashit sir have explained all the uh, things related to penalties and assessment and notices in very detailed matter detail in detail so everybody is very much aware about the how to reply about any notice issued by department and any for any access and most of all of us are also ready for assessment proceeding how to face the assessment proceeding and how to further uh, we should go uh, regarding assessment so i first of all thank ashit sir for his detailed presentation and ashit sir is always uh, helpful to wrc for very various topics related to indirect tax and we assure that ashit sir is also available for for future uh in that text topic which will be a, a need of time yeah yeah definitely and we also always be my privilege thank you sir we also thank all the participant for their patience hearing and uh, keeping the session interactive thank you very much okay thank you thank you all of you thank you sir